Thank you, thank you, Anna, for such warm introduction. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. I'm truly honored to be your online Toastmaster this evening. Such a great opportunity to meet a lot of Toastmasters from different clubs all over the world, from Moscow, from Canada, right? From from U.S. from Afterburners, I'm sorry, where are you from? Which club is it? Afterburners? Texas. Wow, from Texas. Wow, that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is amazing. I here would welcome you to our 211 Toastmaster meeting in Moscow. Today, we will try to know who we are and aren't and try to understand how others perceive us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to speak about personal branding. Now, to kick it off, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of the today's program. As our president says, wait a minute, please. Let me share my screen. Oops, Anna, can I share my screen, please? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me share my screen just. Oop. I'm sorry, wait a minute, just technical problems. Mm -hmm. Here you are. Can you see my screen? Okay, okay. So, who everyone who just joined, you can find the agenda within the chat. So I think by now the majority of people had the chance to do so. If not, I'm going to post it upon your request. However, for now, I'm going to upload the agenda as you can see on my screen. We're going to kick off the standard procedure as we are used to it with our introduction of the evaluation team. So I'm going to do it right now. We will have four speakers today, which are going to be Ivan Samkov, Alina Loginova, Irina Suvorova, and our special guest, Fursi Gotuako. The role are on board, which makes me very happy. As you can see, the names of today's speeches are very intriguing, so looking forward to hearing our speakers. This is going to be the first part, uh, which we will then finish by a small little break after, and we carry on the second part with the table topic session, which are going to be presented by Vahidullah Sheikh today. After the table topic session, we're going to head straight into the third part of our meeting, the evaluation part, uh, which are going to be handed out through the evaluators team led by James Falcon. And we finish our meeting out by our president's speech, who will give us some closing remarks. This should be it for now. I'm going to stop sharing so that you can see me much better now. That's good. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce Evelina Mankirova, who will share with us her joke of this evening. Evelina, the stage is yours. Please unmute yourself. Dear Toastbusters and guests, when I was a kid, I thought when I turned 25 years old, I will have a big house, a nice car, a husband, and two children. I'm already 25 now, and I think I can be really proud of myself. I have nothing from this list. As growing up, I was fighting, and I'm still fighting with my own prejudice that for being happy, you should have something external, a house, a car or other people's approval. Yeah, I know that's a great excuse for being, well, a loser, but still, I think that finding harmony with your inner self and being consistent are essential for every human being. And without this, it will be very hard to create, to start creating your own personal brand.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Evelina, for such an interesting story. Okay, Jesus, it was great. Okay, and now I'm going to hand over to the timer of today, who is Yulia Bulgakova. Yulia, can I ask you to please to share some words of what you're going to do for us today? Thank you, Yulia. I'm sorry, Yulia, are you here? Please unmute yourself. Um, uh -huh. I think uh, Yulia is a uh, lady. Okay. okay, let's continue uh, our session with the A counter. Today is Alexey Bashun. Alexey, go ahead, time is yours. Good evening, everyone. Greetings from Halda Tops Moscow Toastmasters Club. First of all, I would like to thank you for invitation to this meeting. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. Today, I will be the accounter. My main task is to note during the meeting all the inappropriate words or sounds which make your speech less fluent and used as a crutch by a speaker. Words may be such as and, but, so, you know, etc. You should avoid the sounds like uh, um, and repeating words as well. These words and sounds might be annoying to the listeners. I will mark down all the unnecessary fillers in your speech. And at the end of our meeting, I will give a report, which is to give you a short feedback containing the amount of those words and sounds. I hope you will be relaxed and fluent when speaking. So I wish you a good luck and let's get down to business. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. A Counter. We're gonna look out for not using those. Thank you, Alexei. So let me introduce our grammarian and word master of today's meeting. This is Travis Lee Bailey. Travis, can I ask you please to share some words on what you're gonna do for us today? Okay, um, yeah, before last week, I didn't realize that this was actually even a word in English. Um, grammar, from, I can't even pronounce it well, grammar, grammarian. But basically what I'm going to do is, as a native speaker, is I'm going to uh, like zero in on everything that you say. And just basically at the very end, I'm going to be making corrections on some of the things that you can do better as a group, as far as grammar. <laughs> okay, thank you, Travis, for your explanation. And ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, say some uh, words about timer. One of the skill tools master practice is expressing uh, through within a specific time. So the timer is responsible for monitoring time for each meeting segment and each speaker. So... Branding. Let's speak about branding now. By definition, this word is a marketing practice in which a company creates a name, logo or design that is easily identifiable as belonging to the company. This helps to identify a product and distinguish it from others' products and services. Branding is really important because not only is it what makes a memorable impression on consumers, but it allows your customers and clients to know what to expect from your company. But all branding is not the same. The approach to branding a small service business via an e-commerce business or via a big corporate company should be different because the goals of each are different. Well, what is it personal branding? Well, personal branding is all about focusing and being bold. Today, I'm going to give you the top six benefits of building a personal brand and I hope that it will make you want to brand yourself immediately. Well, but for now, straight away, I would come over to our first speaker for today. Our sp first speaker is Ivan Samkov. His speech is about learning leadership. And when I asked Ivan what are his greatest strengths, 
He answered that it's being able to admit his mistakes or wrong beliefs. Wow, well, 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 really good one. So whatever you are ready, I am happy to hand over the microphone to you. You are done, Ivan? I'm ready. Okay. Welcome to our virtual stage. Okay, well, actually we all joined Toastmasters to improve and master not only our public speaking skills, but also our leadership skills and communicative skills. Actually, the aim of my current Toastmasters project is to explore the phenomenon of leadership and identify my style in it. So let's explore who is a leader, why some people actually want to be leaders and how to be an effective leader. First, who is a leader? Well, when we think about leaders, probably the most common which who comes to our mind would be some well-known person as a president or a leader of some protest or probably a CEO of a huge business empire. However, in fact, any group, is it a huge business or is it a small family? Any group usually has a leader or even more than one leader. At the same time, not every manager would be a good leader because by the definition, a leader leads people to some goal and to do so, leaders should possess some characteristics and skills. First, it's being able to inspire a team and attract followers. Also, to have respect of their team. Being able to communicate, to communicate their goal and achieve this goal. And also understand people of this team. So I think actually the most important is being able to inspire others, inspire people around you. So why do some people want to be leaders? For instance, money or power is achievable without being a leader. So I think the root reasons are to achieve a goal which you can't get with uh, yourself and you need other people to get it. Also, it is great self-analyzing and self-improvement when you are being a leader. So how to be an effective leader? And here Toastmasters helps us with their scoring test. And actually being a leader, good leader doesn't mean to be a perfect person. In fact, there are three parts of this equation. Understanding of yourself, understanding of your team, and understanding of the circumstances. And by the scoring test of Toastmasters, I get three types, three styles. Democratic leadership, coaching, and authoritative leadership. And it seems pretty precise because I agree with that. And I use all of these styles. For example, for work, it's mostly democratic and coaching style. And it perfectly works for a group of people who have similar knowledge levels, similar skills to make weighted decisions. But when it comes, for instance, for a family, for grow and teach children, it's the other way around. And I can't imagine a father who sits with their kids and say, okay, now let's uh, have a democratic election. Should, we, should you go to school today or not? So here, the authoritative leadership style definitely suits. And also it is better for situations when the group should make fast decisions and the leader should take the responsibility and show a clear goal to move. However, besides that, there are other approaches. And I believe that we should learn all of them and learn in what situations we should use other approaches to improve our skills, to achieve our goals, and 
actually to make this world better. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you very much, Ivan, for such an interesting speech. You know, Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba says, it needless to be a leader for everyone because this is very hard way. But for Toastmasters members, nothing is impossible, right? That's why we're here. Again, thank you very much for your interesting research and speech. And I'm going to use the opportunity to move along the agenda and introduce our next speaker. Today, our second speaker is beautiful Alina Loginova. Alina's speech is about how to stop thinking and just let things happen. Very, very informative and useful theme, I think. And when I asked Alina what is her unique personality, she said that her friends like her because she's a good listener. She supports them when they need it. She is a good to be a part of all fun and likes when things happen occasionally. Well, really nice start for personal branding, don't you think so, guys? Okay, Alina, you're welcome. The stage is yours. Thank you, Madame Toastmasters. Thank you, all dear friends. Um, how often do you imagine yourself? And this question is generally for girls. So how often do you imagine yourself in your best dress with greatest makeup and fashionable air style? And you are going and you're so confident and there are beautiful sunsets in a big city and your dress moves so sexy by the wind and everyone, everyone wants to look just at you because you are so fantastic and fabulous. And then you meet your ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Is it okay? How do you think? But in real life, when you have slept all the day and just have dressed your old jeans to go to throw out the trash and exactly at that time you will meet your ex-boyfriend funny it seems more realistic and i think all of you had something similar in your life and the reason the reason is not what we called in russian the konpodlosti the reason is that you are not ready to get something in your life you are concentrate on how you are looking and what everybody will say about you or if i cannot do that you know and all your energy is spending on these emotions and you have no space to let something in and even worse that you start to be a negative with your fears with your false pride with your expectations stop thinking let these emotions go another way <laughs> don't let them in your consciousness just take one piece of something and arise everything what you're expecting nothing what is your fears nothing you're free now you are save your energy and you're in a good mood i don't want to teach you with my speech today i just want to show i just want to show when you're absolutely not expecting something you will get the most magnificent a curious story was happened with me a year ago. I had a big conference on my job and a lot of clients calls and I haven't any break. So it was really, really hectic day to me. I was over concentrated on it and had no time to have lunch. And in the end of this uh, conference, Two tables were waiting with pizza and juices were waiting for us after and 
um, me and my colleagues, we have time to spend together and chat. But I had to go to the Toastmasters meeting. So I had no time to relax and eat with my colleagues. I was hungry and I decided to take one piece of meat pie and eat it on my way. So I put it in my bag, said goodbye to my colleagues and went out. And when I was waiting the elevator, I thought, what if I eat my pie right now? There are nobody here. So I opened my bag, took the meat pie and beat off a big part of it. I was really hungry. And you know what? At the same time, one pretty guy came to wait the elevator with me. And even more, he decided to meet me. He said, I don't remember real words, but I think it was something like, have we ever beat each other before? My mouth was full of pie. I was turned my back to him and trying to finish chewing because I couldn't say anything. And the smell of this meat pie was all around us. I was red. The elevator came and we went inside and I said something to him after I finished chewing. I don't remember what, but I was really confused. I wasn't ready that time to something like this. And you know, because of that comical situation, we are still connected to each other and we are good friends. We don't have some romantic relationships, maybe because of that meat pie, who knows? But I really thanks to the universe that I, it had happened in my life uh, because, because I have good friend now. And now when I start to think too much about how I'm looking or what they will say about me or if I cannot do that, let it be, really, let it be. <laughs> and as my friend said, the worst thing I can get from this situation it will be my experience, my own experience. And it's not so worse. Do you agree? And in the end, I want to say to you, stop thinking. Just let things happen. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alina, for such a for speech. As Alina said, we should always remember that we are the best part of ourselves. I want to add something that we should repeat this phrase every single day. Oh, thank you, Alina, very, very much. I will hand over to our next speaker for today, which is number three. It is our next charming lady, Irina Suvorova. Her performance will focus on her leadership skills. The speech is my first cut. Very intriguing and to say the truth, I have no idea what the cut means. When I asked Irina what's the one word that describes her best, she answered actress. Very, very, very strong skill to be a multifaceted personality nowadays, Irina. Please help me welcome to our virtual stage the competent communicator and leader Irina Suvorova. Irina, you are done. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmasters. Good night, everyone. I'm assigned this June as one of the Russian area's director. Am I proud? Yes. Am I excited? Yes. Am I afraid? Yes. It's great honor and great responsibility. I came to this role for more than three years and have to manage my fear starting to do something. Mark Twain said, do the thing you fear most and the death of fear is certain. 
And my first important task for this year is to prepare first court club officer training. Today, the purpose of my speech is to present to you the plan for this event organizing. Certainly, I'm not alone. I have the whole wonderful team. Another director, Valeria, club quality director, Jana, PR manager, Sophie, and secretary, Evgeny. Firstly, we had to define the date and place for this meeting. Regarding place, I called to uh, the corporate club office in Moscow and asked if uh, they can provide the opportunity for us to come to this office in July. After a short discussion, we hadn't came to any consensus, unfortunately. It's too early in Moscow for organizing such big events. So we decided to host this, this meeting online again. And you will see that due to this format, we will have several wonderful opportunities. Date. As Toastmasters has democratic rules, we could not uh, assign defined date without discussion with area council officers. So we created Google Form with the possibility of choosing several desired dates for the training and after getting all the results, defined the exact date, which could be convenient for the majority of people. 25th of July, it's already this Saturday. Uh, second question, which themes should we discuss at the training? Which questions are the most important to solve? And for this uh, question solving, Google Form helped us again. Uh, we proposed several themes, club officers duties, leadership, balance between leadership and public speaking, conflict solving, sales of membership and other themes for the offices to choose. And as we are limited by several hours, we have only one day, we had to calculate the appropriate number of workshops which could be perceived in the most effective way. It will be six different workshops. Another question, who will provide these wonderful workshops? It should be most experienced speakers and leaders. And as we are online now, so we uh, have an opportunity to invite our international guests. There will be uh, one guest with Poland, one guest from Minsk with workshops, so we really will have international event. They uh, are motivated and we encourage them much more to provide their workshops and only in one or two days we have found all speakers for our workshops. I'm personally also planning to provide workshop about sailing membership. Why? Because uh, I am working in sales for several years and I really would like to share all my experience with vice president memberships as I want to see our community bigger and bigger. And for this reason, we have to attract more new people and motivate them to join us uh, in order they could see all benefits for the Toastmasters of the Toastmasters system for solving their individual problem. And uh, I'm still working on my workshops, on my workshop. Uh, also, we had to find Zoom administrators, timers, uh, prepare presentation, template. It's done already. What have I forgot? Promotion, of course, promotion. We are planning, we have planned a promotion plan, promotion strategy to publish two new posts uh, every day starting one week before the meeting. And my speech today may sound as a part of this plan, but it isn't. Actually, it was just a coincidence that uh, Toastbusters had the speech available, a uh, slot speech available for tonight. And I'm very glad to have this opportunity to inform us, to inform you about upcoming event. So nothing happens without any reason. As you see, we have almost realized our preparation plan. 
Also, we have discussed the announcement of uh, future awards, uh, the number of uh, our director speeches, uh, how many minutes will be closing, how many minutes, how long will be opening of our workshop. And now there are three days before the training. Am I afraid? Of course, yes, a bit. It's a new experience for me, although I have provided several workshops already outside of club officers training. Um, and I would like to share uh, all the best my experience with my audience. And when I started to think about this, about this, my fear became smaller and smaller as I started to focus more on others, not myself how to provide the most useful information in the most effective way, how to make people law and work together, how to make interactive session enjoyable for everyone, and of course, memorable. These are questions which I'm solving right now. Will everything go as planned? Who knows? I hope that my workshop, as well as the training in the hall, will be successful and helpful for visitors. And I will come back to you in several meetings with announcement about my results and lessons which I have learned after this project implementation. And if you see how it will be in real, in online format, of course, you can join us using registration link, which I put in this chat right now, just after my speech. So thank you very much and see you this Saturday, 10 a.m. Thank you, thank you, Irina, so much for such structured speech, personal story, and some live hacks how to make the workshop in the best way. See you on Saturday, as you said. Now, I know what this tricky word cut means. Thank you very, very much, Irina. And I'm going to use the opportunity to move to our last but not least professional speaker, Fursi Gotuako. Fursi is going to tell us about names. His speech is What's in Name? Well, looking forward to hear your story. When I asked Fursi what was it that he wants to be known for, he answered that he wants to be known for helping others succeed. Amazing, I think, essential life skill to be a leader of your own life, first of all. I wish you good luck on your way ahead. Percy, whatever you are ready, I'm happy to say the stage is yours. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. What's in a name? Toastmaster of the day, Toastmasters from around the world, what's in your name? As a teacher, I have always loved teaching about William Shakespeare. His works have great characters, great lines, full of ethical and moral dilemmas here. We talk about the moral dilemma of your name. I had my own little dilemma about my name when I was 10 years old. There I was with my father in the car, waiting for my mother and sister who were shopping. They were in there for four days. Well, I was a kid. It always feels like four days. It was really only about four hours. But even after four hours, you start to think, well, I kind of need to use the facilities. And so my dad said, we'll just go into that restaurant right over there. And so I go into the restaurant, I do my business. And after I do my business, I wash my hands, pre-COVID-19, I must say. And right above the sink, where there's normally a mirror, was a chalkboard. I guess the restaurant had gotten tired of everybody writing rude things on the wall. And so they just put a chalkboard up there. That way they could erase it at the end of the night. And I thought, wow, this could be a lot of fun. So I take the chalk and I write my name on the chalkboard. Furzy Gotwako. 
proud of my work. I put it down and go back out to the car. All was well with the world until I saw my father step out of the car. And then I knew what was about to happen. He walks towards me. He throws me the keys and he goes, that's a good idea. And in my head, I thought, no, it's not. I sat in my seat waiting, waiting for him to return when I knew I would get punished for having written on a wall. Finally, he comes back. He opens the door, he sits down. I pretend to be asleep. He puts his hand back for the keys. I reflexively put the keys in his hand. <gasps> now it's too late to pretend to be asleep. I wait, I wait. Finally, he says, Fursey, as you go through life, I want you to think about where you want your name to be seen. That's it? One sentence? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! I had escaped death. I only had one sentence. And that sentence has haunted me for my entire life. You could call it a life sentence. You see, not only had he just said, Stop writing on the bathroom wall. That would have been easy. Instead, he had to challenge me. Where do you want your name to be seen? He didn't want me to think about writing on the wall. He wanted me to think about my name, my reputation, and what it would be associated with. And I've spent my entire life trying to think, where does he want my name to be seen? on a diploma, on the side of a wall of a building, on the name brand of a phone. As I've gone through life asking myself this question, I realized he wasn't talking about name brand on a piece of clothing or an article. He was talking about my brand my personal brand. We all have brand names for technology, clothing, shoes. Do we have a name brand for who we are? As I've gone through my career as a teacher, students have slowly come back to me. And as they have, they've slowly started to tell me about how their life has gone. And in some cases, some have told me about how something I've said, a word, a sentence, or how I treated them has changed their life. Some have even invited me to their weddings. Think about it. On the most important day of their life, they invited a teacher. That's when I realized that's where my name has been written. My name has been written in the hearts of the students I've taught. That's my brand. I use my words to help others succeed. Now, Toastmasters, we love words. I encourage you, even though you're not a teacher there, are kids in every city around the world who need these words, words of wisdom, words of faith, words of encouragement, words like, I believe in you, or maybe words like, where do you want your name to be seen? This is what I have learned from my father's one sentence. Ironically, I started by writing my name on a piece of chalkboard, and now I live my life proudly writing my name on a chalkboard. But it's not in a bathroom, it's in a classroom. And I start off every year saying, students, 
I am your teacher, and my name is Furzi Gotwaka. Where do you want your name to be seen? Madam Toastmaster. Oh my God. Jesus, it was great. Thank you very, very much for such an amazing playing. You see, every Toastmaster member is not only the leader or just professional speaker. Every Toastmaster member is an actor, as Irina said. Thank you for saying, wow, it was absolutely amazing story. Thank you very much. Now I will remember your name very, very long time. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I will straight away thank every one of our speakers for your glorious speeches, as often it is a bliss to listen to a variety of topics for today. During our meeting, I'm looking forward to share with you the top six benefits of building a personal brand, and I hope that it will make you want to brand yourself immediately. First of all, Personal brands connect faster. Personal brands can evolve and adapt more easily. Investing in your personal brand increases the value of your most valuable asset. Personal brands keep you flexible, as you first said. Personal brands give you the power, and I think everybody knows it. Personal brands don't need anyone else but you. As you can see that all you need to make a strong personal brand is only you, dear ladies and gentlemen. Everything depends on you. You are the creative director and producer of your brand. And if you remember that you are unique, you are special and you are you, your personal brand will always be unique and special because you are your own brand. Own it always. And coming back to our meeting, I see that there is some a little time for a little break. Anna? Mm-hmm. Okay, I see. Now I'm gonna see you here in five minutes. So what we have now is my clock is saying 2017, right? Please double check whatever your clock is saying and I'm gonna see you back in five minutes to continue to the second part. Stay tuned and see you soon. Thank you, Alona. Of course you can stay here and have a chat. During the break. Yes, thank you, Anna. It's great to be here. Hi, everyone. Hello, Laurie. Hi. Hi, nice to see you again. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, our special guest. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much for your appreciation. It means a lot to me. Okay. It's basically my third meeting and uh, I'm really honored to be the table topic master today. Uh, since I'm the table topic master today, I think I need to interact a little bit before I start the session, like after this break. Okay. So that you find it easy. Okay. That's a great idea. By the way, uh, which club are you from, Vahidola? I am from North South University Toastmasters Club, which is in Bangladesh. Oh, wow. And it's the first university based Toastmasters Club here in our country. I started my journey at Toastmasters Club in 2017 in the month of December. Mm -hmm. Previously, I was not very much accustomed to public speaking. In fact, I had stage fright, extreme oh. stage fright. I was not able to speak in front of people. I was very intro kind, introvert kind of person. And later on, my, the first day, I took my step towards the podium for an impromptu speech. That was the first day. A new horizon opened up for me. And I have an emotional attachment to this table topic session 
because this table topic session led me to toastmasters journey and i believe that most of the people had their journey started from table topic session so i find this as an opportunity and also to brand yourself at the table topic session to become someone in the future oh wow wow we are really 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 glad to see you here no. tonight with us such a great opportunity i know that covid-19 is a really serious problem but because of this uh, disease um we can meet each other online from different countries all over the world that's a really great opportunity what about larry where are you from larry um okay uh, as i think i told in previous me meetings i'm originally from brooklyn new york oh wow that i've been living <laughs> But I've been living in um, the Midwest since 1996, and I work. I worked in Chicago until this COVID thing ha happened. But now I work out of my home office in Valparaiso, Indiana, and uh, mm -hmm. that's quite quite an adjustment. Uh, the good thing is that uh, I've had for over 20 years, um, you know, since 1996, so over 24 years now, uh, going back and forth. Uh, for three hour plus commutes. So now I don't have to do this. And in the morning where me and my wife are taking tennis classes together and doing whatever we want to, uh, uh, to do. It's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot different. As long as I get my hours in, you know, I'm free and I don't have to worry about commuting. Okay. Wow. That's really nice to hear. To hear some words from Brooklyn, from New York. I really, really, really love the city. Well, really nice to meet you here. <laughs> nice to meet you here. You, you were in New York? Yeah, sure. My uh, little sister uh, lives there in uh, in New Jersey, but it, as you know, it's really, really close to New York. Yes, uh, my family still, uh, well, at least my sister lives in New Jersey. I have some family, cousins and such in Brooklyn, but my sister lives in Edison, New Jersey. Where does your sister live? Uh, as I remember, um, um, no, I don't remember the, the subway station, but it's really close to Manhattan. I think 15 minutes or so. Uh, it's the second oh. station from Manhattan. I don't remember the name. Oh, okay. So, so you're talking about Newark? Yes, exactly. In Newark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Well, sure. ladies and gentlemen, after a short five minutes break, now we're going to kick off the second half of our Toastmaster 211 meeting in Moscow. Well, the majority of guys are back on board, which is fantastic. And we continue our next session of my favorites. They become interactive, spontaneous, and very, very creative. I'm going to introduce the session of table topic and hand over to our special guest, Vahidullah Sheikh. And Vahidullah, the stage is yours. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. As I have already introduced myself, my name is Wahidullah Sheikh and I'm from Bangladesh. And the club I'm from is North South University Toastmasters Club. And I express my sincere gratitude to all of you to have me in your meeting and to provide me with the role of table topic session. In our life, we come across situations in which we do not have much time to think about, yet we have to act or speak something about a particular issue or thing. These situations do not tell us before it puts us there or does not give us much time to prepare. And I firmly believe none of us can say that he or she has never faced a situation in which he or she did not have the challenge to think instantly and act upon it. None of us are prepared for this. However, we can obviously train our minds to be able to think on our feet without taking much time. In our Toastmasters meeting, we call this mind training session as table topic session where you'll be given a topic and you shall have 30 seconds to think about it. And then you shall start speaking about it for about two minutes. Please note that if you speak less than one minute or more than two minutes and 30 seconds, you will be disqualified for voting. 
I shall be picking volunteers for the session. Those who are interested, please show your hand on the screen. It's difficult for me to see messages. So uh, I'd prefer you show your hands on the screen. If none of you show a hand, I shall pick at random, okay? And for your convenience, I shall put the topic on the chat box for you to see and decide who wants to volunteer. Are you all ready? Let's show the spirit. Are you all ready? Let's show thumbs up. Okay. Now let's begin with the first question. Mahidula, I think Larry is the first volunteer. All right, who wants to go first? Larry. Larry, please Larry. unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm unmuted now. Yeah, so to you, your question is also in the chat box. You can see, and your question is, if you are given a choice to brand a product, what would you like it to be and why? Okay, if, if I was given- The is yours. Well, I have been a fellow Toastmasters on and guests. I have had the opportunity to kind of brand, brand products and the products have been actually books that have arisen out of my professional career. So I like to tell people what the product is and what it can do. And my first, my first one was my thesis. And it was a comparison between what I do for a living, surety, which is a type of guarantee on construction projects, and insurance, which are insurance po policies and are, are much different. So I called my thesis uh, the difference between surety and insurance and why it matters. So. That kind of that kind of work to kind of kind of told people what it was, but my wife is also into branding, and she wanted to have a name that brought community together. She sells ads and is the publisher of two local magazines in Valparaiso, Indiana, where we are. So, what would be a good name for that magazine? And we thought and thought about it, and of course, we wanted to have the name of the town in it, Valparaiso. What would is something for bringing families together, bringing community together, and really both bolstering and branding all of the advertisers, all of the local businesses in there. So she called herself Valpo Neighbors. And so we have two magazines now, North Valpo Neighbors and South Valpo Neighbors. And that really has helped her open the door to have more people come into her magazines and know that they will be represented by a truly community magazine outside of politics, outside, outside of all the gossip, but it just brings forward what's happening in the community, the good things people do, and the businesses that are associated with it. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Thank you so much, Larry, for your wonderful speech. It was very fluent and eloquent. We loved your speech. Thank you. I put the topic, I put the topic in uh, beforehand because I wanted you to see it and prepare on your mind so that it becomes easy for you to participate. Uh, who wants to go next? The next? Vahidula, I think the next volunteer uh, is Sri Ram, right? I'm Sri sorry. Ram. Yes, I'm sorry if my pronunciation is not right. Please correct Sri me. Ram. Mm -hmm. Sri Ram, please unmute yourself. Your topic is, imagine that you are a marketing executive at a tourism business company. Now give an elevator pitch and convince a stranger to believe the concept. Traveling is, is the best healer. Thank you so much for the wonderful table topic. Table topic master, Wahidullah. How many of you here like traveling? Can you all please raise your hand? Okay, I see three hands, now four hands. I think rest of the 16 people here is my elevator pitch for you all and remaining four you can lay down a rest. Why do you all think that traveling is a bane for you? You don't like traveling or is there could be some other physical benefits like money is not sufficient, time is not sufficient or I'm just occupied with work and I'm sure if all these three exist 
and I'm sure you now need a therapy and the therapy is not in the form of medicine or vaccination which the entire world is looking on it's just you need to step out of your home I know now with the COVID situation it's tough but what I say is I am going to take you all in a rider to an island where there is no COVID there is no enemies at all and that place is called Sri Ram's home in India there is no COVID and you don't need a visa what you all need is just come with a light mind come over here relax we will give you prepared speeches we will give you toast mushroom meeting we will give you food we will give you shelter we will give you bed and we will give you friends so that when you return back to your home your mind is absolutely light and your heart is absolutely light so traveling there is no age at all no barrier anyone can visit this place and mind it if you do it you will definitely call me again and say Sri Ram I am coming for another vacation next week that is what I can sa surely satisfy you and that's what will be my average for you so enjoy your traveling pack up your boots don't worry about COVID it's now lucid for you all come over here let's enjoy and have fun because that's where we all live for not to go with the stress busting work or time or money nothing would last eternal if you are in stress you will be in stress if you are stress free your life will be a happy free what do you say table topic master please book your tickets to come over here to my home wonderful speech by Sri Ram what a fascinating and wonderful speech I'm mesmerized to see your speech right now COVID-19 situation is the main fear we have and you have hit the nail on the head and used that topic to prepare your elevator pitch which I think was amazing thank you so much for your wonderful speech now I would like to have our third speaker and first I would like to give you the uh, Vahidullah, please unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Thank you, Sridham, for your wonderful speech. And uh, you have hit the nail on the head that uh, during COVID-19 situation, the main fear we have is COVID and coronavirus. And you have used this topic to brand your tourism company. A big round of applause for Sridham. Now I would like to move to our third speaker, but before I have the third speaker, let me tell you the question. How does it feel like to have online meetings and what benefits you think it has? It is also there in the chat box. Now who would like to volunteer? Your hand or message? I can see Jane Jenya. Am I pronouncing your name correct? Uh, yes, it's Jenya. Hi. Jenna. Oh, wow. So we have Jenna on stage. The stage is yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, Toastmasters. It's my pleasure to be here after a long time. <laughs> it feels like home almost. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, to answer the table topics uh, master's question about uh, online meetings, to be honest, uh, I still uh, don't like it. I would prefer to have face-to-face uh, -face meetings, but in terms of the benefits that we all uh, received uh, as Toastmasters participating, you know, in these online uh, meetings uh, so far, um, I think it, it, has, uh, it has brought to all of us um, a, great, um, a great experience uh, because, uh, for example, if we look um, into today's meeting that we have, we have uh, participants from, you know, different countries and uh, we are able uh, to, uh, to have this sort of meeting only online because if we were meeting offline uh, today, uh, people would be able to participate only from Moscow, only from one particular location, but uh, luckily uh, or unfortunately, uh, and, and of course, fortunately, we, we have uh, this uh, international meetings. So I believe uh, even though um, this is a very unfortunate situation that we are in, 
but uh, we are lucky to have this Toastmasters meeting and to be able, you know, to uh, to zoom in from different parts of uh, of the world and uh, have this sort of connection. So I would say yes, this is uh, the main uh, benefit of uh, of online meetings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenna, for your beautiful speech. You acknowledge that, yes, we actually had so many benefits. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this opportunity to meet so many people around the world and have friends, awesome friends like you all. Now, I would like to move on to our fourth speaker. And the question is, it is easy. Is it easy? There's a mistake in the question. Okay, it should be, is it easy to adapt the new problems that comes our way? Why? Or why not? Who would like to volunteer? I can see Svet. Svet. I'm sorry. It's yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, thank you. Svetlana. Svetlana, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, I have been able to pronounce it perfectly. Now, yeah. Svetlana, let's give it a shot. The stage uh, is yours. Thank you so much. And what a wonderful question. I actually think about it quite often because I think right now everybody in this world is trying to adapt to this problem of COVID-19. And for every person, the problem is different. Well, maybe you lost a job. Maybe you just feel lonely because you sit by yourself in a tiny studio apartment. Maybe you're separated from your family. Or maybe you really want to travel somewhere and you can't do that. And it's a small problem, but you still need to get used to it, right? So what do we do? How do we adapt? It's never easy, but I believe in the message that if we approach our problems in the mindset of learning, like even if it was hurtful, even if it was difficult, I can still take something positive from it. I can still rebuild myself and be a bit better in adapting, in um, taking the challenges and making the best use out of it. Then we can still have something positive to remember. And I'm trying to remind it to myself. So I should try to adapt to this horrible problem of COVID-19, of not being able to do things I want to do. Because maybe if I learn to adapt, it will make me a better person in the future. I will be able to tackle bigger challenges in my life. And so I think that I always try to encourage my friends and other people to approach all problems, all the things we need to adapt to in this mindset. Try to learn from it. Try to see how can you use it to make a better future for yourself, to get better skills. And I think this kind of thing helps us to fight the stress and to be actually better in adapting to new things. Because we will always have to adapt. And as I think Charles Darwin said, that the one who survives is the one who is best fitted and best, the one who's quicker adapting to all the kind of new things in the environment. So let's all try to do it. And let's all try to think about it in a positive way. Thank you so much for the question. Thank you so much for your inspiring words. And I, I really believe that most of us will follow your advice to adapt ourselves and few of us won't, never. <laughs> but I really hope that most of us will really try to follow your advice. Now it's time for the next topic. And the next topic is very interesting. Trust me on this. Uh, I'm thinking whether I should have the volunteer first or the question first. Let's put the question first. And the question is, we all brand ourselves, be it in our personal life or at a business. If you happen to like someone and want to get into a romantic relationship, how would you brand yourself? Who would like to volunteer? No one liked the topic. I'm shocked. <laughs> well, Vahidula. Let me help you to pick some brave volunteer for this tricky question. Okay, let it be CJ Marx. Okay, you're welcome, CJ. Please unmute yourself. Can I get the question again, please? Just to make sure I'm clear. The question is, we all brand ourselves, be it in our personal life or at a business. If you happen, to like someone and want to get into a romantic relationship, how would you brand yourself? Let's have some fun with this one. This isn't about me. This is about you. 
This is about you treating yourself. This is about you giving yourself the good things in life. Surely you want the best for yourself. You want a nice car, you want a nice home. You want to be able to experience all the pleasures and wonderful things that this life has to offer. And if you want that to be your reality, you need to be with me. Because CJ Marx is quality. Not for me, no, 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 for you. Now I understand you may think this guy, he comes off as being arrogant, so full of himself. But as I said, this isn't about me, this is about you, you, you. I am here for you. I am here to help you gratify yourself and make you feel like the person you are, an angel. And I've been sent from heaven to take you home. So come home with me and give yourself the treat you deserve. Back to you. Table topics, master. Thank you so much. It was so wonderful. I did not think that you would say it in this way. It was so marvelous. You see, and... that was the right choice. Exactly, that was the right choice. We have learned from you. <laughs> Now, I would like to have our sixth speaker and I would like to have it, have this speaker, a lady speaker, basically. Because the topic is, what features do you expect to have when you go shop dresses or clothes and cosmetics? Any lady speaker or do I pick at random? Do it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pick at random. Uh, the main challenge is I, can, I cannot read many names because it's written in Russian language. So let's, let's have Galina for this. A big round of virtual applause. Uh, yes, dear Toastmasters and guests, what features do you expect to have when you go to uh i hate shopping i uh understood it yesterday when i tried to um renew my uh my uh clothes and i understood finally that i hate it so um the features what i expect um of course, uh, it's con uh, it concern of brand of myself, so I should not be ugly uh, when someone uh, look at me. Uh, I should be more beautiful than I think about myself. Um, it uh, should uh, not show my uh, minuses, I think so. Maybe that's all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Galina, for your speech. It was wonderful. And uh, trust me on this. You are the first person, you are the first girl who I have ever come across who do not love shopping. <laughs> exactly. I've never heard someone who does not love shopping, especially girls. We boys, we just straight get into the sh shop and do not find the other way. We just get out of the shop. In the middle, whatever we can find, we just pick it. And you girls are like maze. I want to shop everything. Okay, uh, I would like to ask President, do I have more time to take any more speaker? Okay, I can take one. one more, I can see. One more person. All right. And the next question is, which one do you think is stronger, brain or fitness of your body? Who would like to volunteer? Anyone, anyone, Alina, Alina. Okay, let's, beautiful Alina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Wahidula. Yes, I want to say that you have your body and you have your brain and the third one, you have your soul. And all of that, you should 
um, it should have in a good in a good shape. So as for me, if I want to have a good um, have a good muscles, <laughs> so I uh, want to work with my lovely trainer. If I want to have a good mood and uh, to have space in my brain, I sometimes I do nothing or I read something or I walk with my friends so I feel free with them so my brain starts to be move out all, all negative feelings from them. And to be in a good shape with my soul, I need to believe that everything in our life and every day what I have is the best the best I, I can have forever. So every day I open my eyes and I ask myself, what a great day today I have. And every night before I go to sleep, I tell I, I tell to myself to myself that I had a lot of things and I had a lot of things that I am thankful for God, for the universe, for everyone who did this day the best for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alina, for your wonderful speech and uh, participating in the session. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed being the Table Topic Master. You all are amazing, trust me. I love you all very, very much. Now I would like to return the floor to our beautiful Toastmaster of the evening, Alyona Kim. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Table Topic Master, our dear and special guest, Vahidullah Sheikh, for such a tricky and interesting questions. Well, special thanks to our creative table topic speakers for such impromptu but thoughtful answers. You see, every Toastmaster is not only just a speaker, every Toastmaster is a good listener, first of all. Now, you can see the link within the chat, so all of you guys can click it and make your vote for the best table topic speaker for today. For those who cannot find the chat within on your screen on the lower part, you have next to security participants a button which called chat. Once you click this button, your chat appears. Okay, let's give ourselves 10 seconds or so to click it and make your vote for the best table topic speaker of today. Thank you, everyone. Okay, as I see, everyone is voted, right? Okay, so we continue our session and we now move on to what is perhaps the most important part of the meeting, the evaluations portion. I will use the opportunity with handing over to our special guest and our general evaluator, James Falcon. James, the stage Thank is you. yours. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. I'm honored to be your, your guest general evaluator today coming from Western Canada, from Vancouver, Canada. Our first speech evaluator, and I notice in your club you call them personal evaluators. Our first speech evaluator or personal evaluator is Alan, and Alan will be evaluating I Ivan's, Ivan's speech. I would now like to hand the floor over to Alan. And I assume, I'm assuming now that the speech evaluators are given three minutes, three minutes for their speech uh, evaluation times. Okay. I would now like to hand the floor over to Alan. You have the floor. Thank you very much, James. Dear Toastmasters. Let me turn to Ivan right now. Ivan, I want to first of all congratulate you on taking this challenge to deliver the speech 
um, I'm now going to give you a spoken evaluation, which will be followed later on by my written evaluation that I will send you over by email. The purpose of your speech was to share your own personal leadership style or leadership styles in general. You chose to go with leadership styles in general, so that was fine. I'll start with the good news. You were very clear in your speech and you looked really comfortable. I remember seeing the head of a guitar in the background there. That tells me that you didn't try to make it look perfect. You sat in your couch and you were really comfortable. That was great, great. well done. Your structure, your speech had three main parts. The first part was you introduced and then you told us what a good leader is. Then you told us in the second part how to be a good leader. For example, you said, uh, understand himself. And then the last part was leadership styles, democratic, coaching, and authoritative. And you closed your speech with a call to action. That was wonderful. You said we should learn other leadership styles and make the world better. Now, there are some areas that I think you might want to consider for improvement. First of all, because the purpose of your speech was to dwell on leadership styles, I think you should have done that more because you had, you had just one little section that talked about leadership styles. Most of your speech was how to be a good leader. So I think you should have dwelt more on that. Secondly, stand up, man. You're talking about leadership. I'm a big believer of standing up. Let me give you just two reasons why you should stand up. First of all, in the real world, unless you're on a wheelchair, most of the time, when you're talking to people, you stand up. So you want to simulate the real world as you're practicing your skills. Secondly, it's just respectful to stand up, you know, when you talk to people. And because you are not standing up, you are sitting, that created a second problem, your gestures. Your gestures were limited, your hand. So it's, it's you know, that's, those, were, those were connected. Next, your eye contact. Uh, I'm not sure maybe you are not looking at the camera, but it appeared that, I don't know, I don't, I don't think you were reading, but you were not looking to our eyes, which means into the camera. Finally, Ivan, you sent me your evaluation form very late today, early today. Uh, you know, it's not possible to make a complete evaluation in a spoken way. So the evaluation form is extremely important. Once you identify your, your, your speech evaluator, send your form early. And I will send you more uh, feedback on that. So to sum up, you should have dwelt more on leadership styles and next time, please send your evaluation form early together with your pathways documents. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. James. Thank you, Alan. Our next personal evaluator is Anna. Anna will be evaluating Alina's speech. Anna, you have the floor. Dear, dear all, dear Alina, probably my evaluation won't be perfect. I guess it would be clumsy, but let it be. Let it be as it is. Because uh, you taught us that we shouldn't be too serious to ourselves, that we should... Mm, uh, pay little attention, not as much attention to the external things and that we should get rid of the perfectionists. All these things can help us to make small steps in some other, uh, in some things and uh, gain uh, bigger goals when we are not too serious about ourselves. Uh, your project was about body language and you used a lot of gestures. The three I remember the most. How you flirted with your hair, <laughs> how you bite the cake and how you erased something. And uh, so you succeeded in that. I also liked how you prepared for the speech. You wore a beautiful dress and you wore um, not only dress, you wore beautiful smile and this smile shined all through your speech. 
and to recommend some recommendations from my side as um so you were very good with gestures but there were too many of them so there were some unintentional too many hand movements and on the screen they looked um a little bit can i say the word so it blurred the screen and i also noticed that you st stood up you were standing in front of the uh, screen but you stepped from side to side so that also looked a little bit um, um, a little bit a little not as good as it could be <laughs> well thank you alina your speech I liked your speech because it has deeper meaning and your smile um, decorated your speech a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for your evaluation of Alina's speech. Our next evaluator, our next personal evaluator is CJ Marks, who will be evaluating Irina's speech. CJ, you have the floor. I knew this would be fun. I knew you make it so challenging. Great job, Ina. There were three things I'd like to commend you on and three points of improvement. First, you did very well. Great enthusiasm and energy throughout your speech. We were engaged and with you the whole time. So great job with the energy and enthusiasm. Second thing I want to commend you on, your facial expressions. I think we could all agree that you have really vibrant facial expressions and that carried throughout your speech. Well done there. The third thing you did exceptionally well, many people have a problem with this, but you're not one of them. Eye contact with the camera. You realize that the eye contact is here at the camera, not at the screen like I'm doing now. And you maintained eye contact with us the whole time. So those three things, energy and enthusiasm, great job of facial expressions, and eye contact, well done. To that end, as an experienced speaker, we could always improve, and I want to give you tips for improvement. The first thing I noticed with you, Irina, this evening is your hands. I think your hands, all your gestures, but specifically your hands, were a bit out of control at times, and you used the same gestures. We picked this tip up from Donna Jaya, 2014 world champion. When using your hands, I think it's a good idea to show the palms of your hands even on camera, because that actually is a bit more relaxing than the back of your hands. So for example, you gave us two points. This would have been slightly better as a professionally trained speaker. So give us more palms, less back of your hands, and a variety of gestures when you're talking. I noticed you were here a lot. You kind of kept doing this a lot. So more variety, maybe bring them here, just one hand sometimes, palms. That's the first point. Second, there were some points where you weren't really so smooth. And I think that simply comes down to practice. So by simply practicing more and pausing, so even if you make a mistake, just pause, collect yourself, then begin talking. The third thing, I would have liked to have heard a more detailed story. Again, you're an experienced speaker and an experienced storyteller. Granted, the nature of your talk tonight wasn't about storytelling, but you being so good, I think you could have found a way to give us a story. So these three things, better use of hands, more palms, less back of your hand, being in control of your hands, practicing more, and if you stumble, just pause. And third, giving us a story in your talk. If you do these three things, combine them with the great points of your facial expressions, energy, enthusiasm, and eye contact, you'll make a great talk even better. But overall, well done, Irina. Looking forward to your next talk. Back to you, James. Thank you, CJ. Just want to confirm everyone can hear me clearly. Great. Now we're moving on to the evaluation for this fourth speaker today. The personal evaluator for Furze is Svetlana. Svetlana, I would love to hand the floor over to you 
where you will be evaluating Firze's speech. Svetlana, you have the floor. Well, thank you so much. And thank you, Firze, for the amazing speech and for the opportunity for me to listen to it carefully and to note down a lot of really good things that you used that I can use myself. And I think all of us can learn a lot from your speech. So what did I like the most? I usually do not like when people stand while giving Zoom speeches. I think it's almost always looks unnatural, but you changed my mind today. You really did an amazing job standing in front of the camera, but you managed to position yourself well, the light was good, and you were not afraid to use the camera space. And this is something we cannot do in offline meetings. We cannot move closer to the camera like you did. We cannot pull off a bit. You did it really well. This is a really good trick that we all can learn how to do, like how to make like the dramatic use of camera to move a bit closer, to move away, to feel the space around us. That was really, really good. I'll think about how to incorporate it into my own speeches soon. I really liked how you framed the story. You started with the image of chalkboard. You ended with the image of chalkboard. You had a really clear message that all of us could think about. Like, what do we think about our own name, our own reputation, our own brand? So the message of your story was very clear. The story was personal. It was memorable. Uh, tone, pace, pauses, all of it was perfect. Uh, and you engaged the audience. You didn't ask any questions, but you used a lot of words like think about or imagine or things like that, that encouraged your audience to think about your message as well. Uh, so what can I give as a suggestion? I really do not have any major points of criticism, but um, one thing that I thought I could comment on is your introduction. I don't think that Shakespeare added a lot to your speech. I think if you started just with your own story, with this image of chalkboard, of you going to the bathroom to write your own name in, it would have been as powerful uh, and even maybe even more memorable. And it would have allowed you to arrive to your main message a bit quicker. Uh, I think at the very beginning, I was not sure where the speech was going. And maybe if you cut the Shakespeare part, even though we all like Shakespeare, maybe it will allow your audience to get to your main point a bit quicker. But it's not a major point of criticism. And again, well done. I really enjoyed your speech. And I will try to use um, the things you use in my own speeches in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Svetlana. And thank you to all the personal evaluators tonight. Now I would like to ask for the grammarian's report. Hello, uh, it's quite a pleasure to be here today. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm the grammarian today. Uh, what a great opportunity. All of the speeches were extremely interesting. Uh, I just wanted to explain a little bit about um, some of the grammatical errors. Uh, the single most grammatical error with the non-native speakers today were singular verbs with a plural subject. That was the most common error. Um, there were some examples that come immediately to mind. It concern, like for example, uh, people would say it concern a brand of myself instead of it concerns branding myself. Uh, someone referred to Madam Toastmasters in the plural instead of Madam Toastmaster. Uh, what I have forgot instead of what I have forgotten. I hadn't any break instead of I didn't have a break. Um, I am try to remind it to myself instead of I am trying to remember. And also one of the, uh, one of the things that I caught today was that English does not have two negatives in a sentence, unlike Russian and other languages. So, um, it, for example, today, uh, one of the one of one of the members today said, "We won't follow your advice never," where it should be, "We wouldn't follow your advice ever." Um, and then there was another example of, "I want to shop everything instead of I want to shop for everything." Um, and then finally, we, we shouldn't be too serious to ourselves instead of we shouldn't be too serious. Um, and there was, there's, as, an, as a native speaker, um, and especially here in Russia, there's a common use of uncountable nouns. Uh, uncountable nouns are misused. Um, and I hear that a lot. And, and I always joke that it makes my, my, my ears bleed 
there's certain things that are, are said that that uh, that really make me uh, uh, kind of cringe a little bit inside. Uh, one thing that 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 I didn't catch at all today, which is really good, is the use of ED. A lot of of especially it, it shows how how well and how how uh, how fluent everyone is here is that in the entire hour that I was here, I didn't hear a single person that used ED wrong. So in, if, for example, ask instead of asked. Um, so that was great. So no one, no one made that error, which is very common in Russia. But one of the, the errors that I did catch was, uh, as I mentioned, uncountable nouns. So for example, juice is always spoken in singular. It's never plural. So you'd never say juices. Um, and then another example was you, um, unlike in Russian, um, you would never say a guy is pretty. Uh, that has some very strange connotations. If you say a guy is pretty, uh, you'd say the guy was handsome. Um, there was some really good use of grammar. Um, I, I was uh, grammar and idioms. Um, some of the word use was just excellent um, with our primary, uh, our primary speakers today. Excellent, excellent idioms. Um, Elena had some really rich stories, which I, I really appreciated. Um, Irina's uh, very positive, death of fear is certain, uh, really stuck with me. Uh, Ivan's speech was also very engaging and I found it incredibly interesting. Uh, with Fursi, and I have to disagree with the last um, evaluator, I actually like the Shakespeare, so I guess it's a matter of taste. Um, I really like the Shakespeare uh, reference, so, um, and I, 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 I love the, the, whole, the whole central theme is, is um, I need you to think of where you want your name to be seen. That was, that was very uh, memorable to me. And then Alona, she had that special message of everything depends on you. Um, so all in all, just really excellent. Um, a lot of, uh, again, the, the biggest problem was singular verb with a plural subject. And second um, was that uh, uncountable nouns. So those were the biggest errors. Thank you. Thank you, Travis, for your grammarian part, report. Very thorough. I would now like to ask for the uh, um, counter report from Alexa. Alexei. Yep. Thank you, James. Dear Toastmasters, let me share my report with you. Uh, I will try, I will have a try to be short today. Well, Anna, Anna, you have used a lot of uh, um, sounds and uh, there were a lot of repeats and words sometimes, but <laughs> it's okay. Alona, uh, it's been a pleasure to listen to you. <laughs> very fluent speaking. Uh, that was very nice. Evelina, very nice speaking, thanks. Travis, uh, Today, the sound M was your friend. <laughs> Please have a try to get rid of it. Ivan, you stretch words a little bit, but it's okay. Your speech was nice. Alina, there were a lot of uh, sounds in your speech, but in general, it was okay. Irina, the same to you. Thursday. Your speech wo was very emotional and you could voice movies if you wanted, I guess. <laughs> no annoying sounds at all. Wahidullah, very fluent speaking, no annoying words and sounds, excellent. Larry, you unfortunately repeated words a few times. For example, so, so, so. Shiran. An inspiring speech with no annoying words. Great. Zenia, you, you've said uh, more than 20 times. Please pay attention to this. <laughs> Svetlana, very nice speaking, only four annoying sounds. Uh, super. CJ Marks, that was just awesome. Great speaking. <laughs> Galina, it's difficult to answer a question quickly and it might be confusing. Try to be more relaxed next time. There were a lot of annoying sounds. Alina, in general, it was nice, but there were such sounds as 
uh, four times and there was repeating words as well. James, very fluent, speaking without mistakes. Thank you. And Alan, uh, the sound M only two times. Great speaking. Thank you very much. That was my evaluation. Thank you, thank you, Alexei. I would now like to ask for the timers report. Now in our club, and we would have the timers report, getting the times for the speeches, the table topics, the evaluations, but also in particular, if there were any disqualifications. <laughs> and that is if you go 30 seconds or more into the red. So I would now like to ask for our timer to please give your report the way that you do it in this club. Uh, hi, uh, I'm sorry for a uh, little uh, technical uh, at the start uh, our meeting, uh, but uh, I'm very uh, like uh, as uh, uh, you uh present uh, uh your, your speech uh alexey uh very uh good uh, but uh time limit uh, was uh exceeded uh, five uh, uh no no uh story uh a little less than uh speech uh it could be uh, I hope uh, in uh, in the future you uh, better your speech. Uh, Irina uh, exceeded uh, limit um, uh, was uh, uh, 30, 35 second, uh, and uh, I note uh, to um uh, sorry uh first is first is uh, inspiration uh, speech uh was um, uh, limit uh, exceeded by uh, only 5 uh, second uh to um Grammar, uh, grammar and uh, report two uh, exceeded uh, time limits uh, uh, for uh, thirty uh, second. Uh, speakers number uh, uh, number two. Uh, it's uh, very good. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Madam Timer. I would now like to move on to my general evaluation of the meeting. I would normally ask for, and I will ask for four minutes for evaluation uh, time to give my general evaluation. I may go over time because I have a lot of feedback to give. Also, this is the online experience. So I'm not just giving you an evaluation based on what happened in the meeting, but also the online experience of this meeting and the experience that I've had with other clubs in different parts of the world. I will for, first start with giving some observations regarding the evaluations of the speeches. Now, Alan evaluated Ivan. You were clear, confident, good suggestions. Interesting thing here about the speaking area and very interesting indeed because a lot of times when I evaluate someone who does a speech, and I've heard this before from other people that we, we give our suggestions based on what was, a, what was possible for them. If the person could not stand up, if, they're, if there's a limit to what their space is like, how can that be maximized? How can that be optimized as best as possible? It's not always possible for someone to stand up, but that's what we do. We frame it within that, within that parameter. 
the ca camera placement. Now, I really liked your evaluation, Alan. I was trying to think what areas could have been improved in the delivery of it. And one thing I would suggest is if there was a some object in the area, it could be a picnic table or something outside where you could place your camera on a stable surface because whenever the cam whenever you're holding it any amount of shaking you're using a more you're using up more bandwidth in this case it wasn't an issue but in other situations a moving camera actually can cause disruption in delivery but all in all it was a very clear evaluation and i and, and very confident came across very confident thank you alan now, Anna, you were natural, you were easygoing. There were some words that I think you were reaching for. That's the English expression that I would use. And one of them was about, it was about Alina's gestures. And the word that I would use is scattered, perhaps. Scattered the gestures. Now, the important thing is that the gestures aren't just random, that they're connected to what you're saying. So, um, and if they don't seem connected to what's actually being spoken, then it might appear scattered actually to be to be more accurate you were talking about the hand gestures and yes if the hands are moving around a lot that can look scattered even though it may have meaning in terms of the body movement i think a good word to describe that possibly in english would be disjointed going from her movements physically from left to right again if it's part of the speech if it's part of the meaning that is a good thing if it is just movement for movement's sake, that's an English expression, then it's not helping the delivery of the speech. CJ, clear, well-constructed, well-paced, positive. There's nothing that I can really uh, suggest for improvements on that. Again, I'm just giving everyone my observations. I love the way when you talked about hand gesture is that you actually show it. You don't just say it, but you show it, especially if it's something physical, you show it. Svetlana, great positioning suggestions. And this kind of goes back to back to Alan, what Alan was saying. In District 21, when they were doing official contest speeches, and that, that is exactly, what Furze did in his speech was a good example of a, of, of like an official contest speech. In District 21, the way it works is, if you have four speakers, and there's one speaker who can only stand back three feet from the camera, then everyone else has to move forward or move back to the same level. So everyone's on equal footing. If we had a strange situation situation where, where one person could not stand up in an official contest speech, then I guess everybody would be sitting down. <laughs> so that's just the way District, District 21 did it this year for their international contests. Now, there was no table topics evaluator appointed. So there was nobody who would actually does an evaluate in our club and some other ones, they will actually evaluate table topics. I loved Wahidella. I've been to your club in Bangladesh and I hope to return again. I know Murtaza there. He's a member of my group. And I thought a very effective use of the chat. In our group, what we do is we just post all all of the table topics questions uh, in the chat. But I like the way you did it. You did them one by one so you don't get them lost in the chat. And that way, if anyone has an issue, because it's a surprise question, if anyone has an issue with, hmm, what did he actually say? Because they're not fluent in English, they can read the chat and understand better and even use an app to translate it. I was impressed with the way you did the table topics. And I was also very impressed in general with the way the whole meeting uh, carried out. I, could make, I can make suggestions, I can make observations, but overall, I felt very good about the confident feeling in the group and the way you just launched right into it, like real veterans of this club. When I speak, I have to temper my comments because there's also guests in the meeting too. So again, you know, guests are getting a new experience which each, with each meeting and with each different club that they visit. The word of the day, someone had posted in the chat, what is the word of the day? And I was going to suggest that the word of the day be made more clear by putting it in the chat at the very beginning. 
and perhaps repeating it. Because I've been in club meetings where people crashed and they came back in and then the chat started from when they logged back in. So I would, just, I would suggest uh, perhaps putting word of the day in the chat or incorporating it into your name. When you rename yourself, you can actually put the word of the day as part of your name so people can see it. Perhaps at the beginning, like for me, you can see guest GE. What else? Timing backgrounds. I don't know if this is the way you always do your, your timing with the cards and all that. But one thing I would suggest is experimenting with the virtual backgrounds. Now, the thing with the virtual backgrounds is they're great. And if you don't have a good green screen or anything like that, then that's fine. It'll, it'll look crazy, but people will see that it's green yellow or whatever. So you could experiment with that. I'm saying this in general to all club members. For all I know, you probably use backgrounds sometimes depending on who is the timer of the day. What other comments? One thing I really liked about your agenda is that you actually post the Zoom link in the agenda. When clubs were first going online, th that was being omitted from a lot of agendas because everyone was scrambling. That's an English expression, English uh, descriptive word. Everyone was trying to get online. So their agendas were like when they meet in person. But when you have an online experience, you ha might have to adjust your agenda to adopt to the online experience, which is different from the physical. I love the way that you had put the Zoom link in there. What else can I say? Oh, I noticed you have a meeting number on your agenda. That must be from like the whole history of the club, I suggest, because it's this is like over a hundred, meeting over a hundred. My suggestion, perhaps in parentheses, put the meeting number that you've been online. My group, we started a group online over a year ago. We're at meeting number 53 coming this Sunday. And uh, I, it's a great way of tracking where you are. Like, how long have we been doing this? So you could have your in-person meeting number and then your, your online. And also the other thing to keep in mind too is eventually you may meet in person again and you might want to seriously consider becoming a hybrid club, which is what we are trying to do. That is where you are in person, but you also have online guests that can come in on the big screen. And our club also meets in the library. So that is what we are striving for. And there are a lot of clubs that don't want to lose the experience of international guest members. I can't think of anything else to say. Other than that, this was great. I hope to return in the future as a guest and not doing a big, a heavy role as a general evaluator. I can see that we're slightly over time. I can't think of anything else to say. I, I noticed that you had a five minute break. That was useful for me, the five minute break. I've been in some clubs where when they were physically meeting, they'd have like 15 minute breaks but then when they adopted to the online experience, 15 minutes is a long time to have a break. And so, so I would suggest to people to drop the breaks unless you really need them. Uh, but five minutes is very good. This is one of the best break times that I've seen. I can't think of anything else to say, so I think I really should hand the floor back to our Toastmaster of the day. It's been an honor to be your general evaluator and I hope to see you all in the future, either here or at my club or at your club. Take care. Thank you. And I should not apologize, never apologize, but it's an honor to be here. Thank you, James, for your very valuable remarks. And now my closing remarks. First, um, I would like you to vote in the form to evaluate this meeting, the Toastmasters members can do this. I will give you 30 seconds for it. Is it anonymous? Yes. Okay, just curious. Oh, 
Okay, I think you're ready. And now I want to, want to ask you to unmute yourself because I want the winner of the table topic session to hear your round of applause. You can unmute yourself, you can click on your cameras. And are you ready to hear the name? It's our guest from the United States, DJ Marks. Congratulations! Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Thank you. Would you like to say something? Oh, simply put, yeah. Thank you very much. Originally from San Diego, California, currently in Japan right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> we are looking forward to see you again in our club. The next thing, um, let's take a picture. Are you ready? Okay, people are joining. <laughs> Great. Okay, I think that was a great meeting. So many experienced speakers and very meaningful reports and evaluations, I think, or all of you learn something new and will implement it in your future projects and speeches. That's why let's thank all the participants with with applause. Uh, with the the next meeting will be on the in two weeks on the fifth of August, and if you want to. Take a role. Contact Alina Loginova, our VPM. And if you have any questions on membership, you can stay after the meeting to discuss them. And with that, I announce this meeting closed and welcome. See you in two weeks. If anyone wants to stay, you are welcome. Great, Anna. Congratulations. Thank you, Anna. On what? <laughs> huh? On this meeting. Yeah, it was. I was not at the previous meeting when you were the first. First time. Uh, in the role of the president. Goodbye till next time, everyone. Take Thank care. You. See you, Larry. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the guests. You were marvelous. Thank you. Have a great night. See you, first day. Thank you so we'll much see for you having are. me. Cool. <laughs> and, and, and one more thing. I would like to speak with Irina. Hi. Hi. <laughs> like, you are the first one who I got in touch with on Facebook. I hope you remember. And yeah. then I collected the Zoom ID to attend your Toastmasters meeting. And last meeting, I attended your meeting, but I was, you were not there, probably. And your name was written in Russian on Facebook. Therefore, I could not read your name. So I was telling your members that there's someone in your club who invited me to attend the meeting, but I could not tell you your, her name. And they said, why? Because I cannot read it. <laughs> that I showed it here and then so it's Irina. Uh, I'm really happy to have been able to meet you today and thank you so much for getting in touch with me. Thank you for your wonderful role today. It was a pleasure to have you as our Table Topics Master. We hope to see you again at our meetings. I hope to attend again. Thank you so much. Your appreciation means a lot to me. <laughs> Let me share a few words. I think it's very important to have uh, English native speakers uh, during meetings uh, when you speak in English. Mm -hmm. Because uh, only a native English speaker can correct you and give some proper feedback on your English speaking skills. 
I, I always try to make a point if I use an English expression to announce it before I make the comment because that can be confusing if someone is not fluent then if I use it, it's just like someone told me in universities where they have a lot of international students in the United States they will not they will tell the students we will not use baseball euphemisms like games from games like hitting a home run because in different cultures that will mean something totally nothing <laughs> different so uh, yeah english expressions and every language has their expressions that make sense in their own language it's a metaphor but in the the other language it may mean anything <laughs> But it's great that we can understand each other. <laughs> yeah. I did not realize that Alina had, I didn't comment on it because usually the general evaluator does not comment on the actual speeches. 